If you're a software engineer looking to break into AI, you may be overwhelmed. Everyone is talking about LLMs, prompt engineering, vector databases, RAG, fine tuning, safety. I don't blame you if you feel like you're already behind. Here's the good news. Becoming an AI engineer in 2025 is quite achievable. You don't need a PhD, research experience, or many years of experience in machine learning. In this video, I'll walk you through a high-level roadmap to help you start and gain clarity on entering the rapidly changing field of AI as a software engineer. Hey folks, my name is Utsav, a software engineer based in Seattle with over 15 years of experience in big tech and startups. My goal with this channel is to provide you mentorship to help you excel in your software engineering career. If that sounds interesting, consider subscribing and connect with me on Instagram, LinkedIn, or any other social media platform where I'll be happy to answer your questions directly. So the first question to ask is why even care about AI engineering? Let me provide you with some data. According to a recent Microsoft report, 65% of senior leadership said that they would not hire someone without AI skill. And 70% indicated that they would hire a less experienced but AI savvy software engineer than an experienced one who hasn't adapted to AI. In terms of the job market across the US in Q1 2025, there was a 25.2% increase over the previous year in AI engineering related job postings. And and a recent study also found that professionals with generative AI or AI engineering skills earn 35 to 47% more than their peers. That tells you everything you need to know how a modern software engineer must also be an AI engineer. The follow-up question then is, what does a modern AI engineer do? Well, unlike traditional ML engineers who focus on model training and deployment, modern AI engineers are concerned with building applications using those models, whether they are large language models or foundation models. They design systems that combine user prompts, business logic, external data sources, and AI APIs to create intelligent assistants, search engines, chatbots, automation tools, and much more. Some focus on building pipelines that feed to these models, while others specialize in prompt design, safety evaluation, or integrating models into production systems. It's a hybrid role that combines software engineering, AI expertise, product thinking, and experimentation. What this means is that you too should be able to perform these tasks. And that's what this roadmap is essentially for. Let's go through it step by step. First, establish a strong foundation in coding and software engineering fundamentals. This includes understanding data structures and algorithms, which are the core building blocks of problem solving. While AI can assist you in writing code, you still need to be able to read, debug, and refactor that code, and also be able to design systems. Knowing how to code today is even more crucial because it helps you develop the intuition to identify errors, ask better questions, and use AI tools more effectively. Therefore, before you start working with AI, ensure that you're comfortable with Python, Git, Linux, and integrating various external APIs. Additionally, get familiar with Docker and at least one cloud platform such as AWS or Azure. Finally, make sure you understand the fundamentals of scaling a production level system. Second, build essential AI literacy. By that, I don't mean you need to become a deep learning expert, but you should understand some key areas. Here are some examples, but this is obviously not an exhaustive list. What is machine learning and how does a model learn? What is a loss function and why do models optimize it? What are embeddings and how do they help with similarity and context? What does it mean when a model is overfitting or generalizing? What do we mean by evaluation? How do we know if an AI model is good? If you're curious and want to dive deeper, you can study neural networks and training techniques like gradient descent, but only if it excites you. The goal is to be comfortable with the big picture, not the math or the nitty gritty. Once you grasp the basic, the next step is to use some AI models to become familiar with them. The best way to do this is by learning some solid prompt engineering techniques and applying them to popular tools like ChatGPT, Claude, and Gemini. You can test your prompts, ask technical questions, or build small use cases. As you practice, you'll start noticing patterns, how models respond, uh, what works well, and where they struggle. To go further, it's helpful to understand the mechanics of prompt engineering. This includes a zero-shot prompting, where you ask questions without example, few-shot prompting, where you provide examples, and a chain of thought prompting, where you guide their reasoning step by step. You'll also want to learn how different prompts are structured. System instructions versus user queries versus model responses. Prompts are essentially your interface to the model, and mastering them makes you 10 times more effective. The next step is learning how to integrate LLM APIs into real applications. This is where your skills as a software engineer shine. The most powerful models to date, like GPT-5, Claude, Mistral, or Cohere, are accessible via APIs. Learning how to use APIs from these providers enables you to prototype and integrate advanced capabilities 
these very quickly. Start by calling these APIs in simple scripts or tools. This will allow you to learn how these APIs differ from your standard REST APIs. Once you're familiar with the mechanics of streaming responses and similar features, take it a step further. Integrate LLMs into existing apps that you have already built. Maybe a Slack bot that summarizes messages, a Chrome extension that drafts email, or a backend service that responds to customer support queries. Through this, you'll learn how to handle things like authentication, rate limits, context windows, and output parsing. You'll also begin to consider where in your architecture your model fits, whether it's part of a synchronous user interaction or runs as part of an asynchronous workflow. Practice here builds the intuition you'll need for scaling later in the roadmap. If you are serious about adding AI engineering to your skill set, let me quickly share a resource that can make a huge difference for you. Data Camp's Associate AI Engineer for Developers track, who have also kindly sponsored this video. If you look at all the job listings asking for OpenAI, Hugging Face, or Langchain experience, you'll see that AI engineering is one of the fastest growing fields right now. I've been recommending Data Camp for a while now, and what I love about them the most is their hands-on interactive approach. This track is a structured 26-hour program with nine courses and three real world projects. So you're not just watching videos, you're building AI-powered apps with the OpenAI API, mastering prompt engineering, working with Hugging Face, and learning best practices in LLM ops and software engineering. You'll even get to build full projects like chatbots, recommendation engines, and semantic search tools for your portfolio. And since there are no prerequisites, you can jump in even if you're new to AI. By the end of the track, you'll have the practical experience to attempt their industry-recognized AI engineer certification, which you can then showcase in your resume or LinkedIn. So if you want to follow a guided track and build production-ready AI solutions, check out the link in the description below. Thanks to DataCamp for sponsoring this video. Okay, on to step five. Learn orchestration frameworks for modern Gen AI applications. When your app logic starts involving multiple steps like fetching data, transforming inputs, calling multiple models, or maintaining state, you will want an orchestration framework. This is where tools like Langchain, Llama Index, and Haystack come in. They help you manage memory, tools, and agents more effectively without writing everything from scratch. Langchain is excellent for building complex pipelines where LLMs interact with APIs, database, and other tools. And Llama Index makes it easier to interface with your data sources. Try recreating popular use cases. Uh, document Q&A bot, a multi-step assistant, or even a basic agent that plans and executes tasks. As you work with orchestration frameworks, you'll also want to understand emerging standards like MCPs, uh, which is an open protocol designed to structure what information goes into the model's context window. Think user intent, retrieve documents, tool outputs, and memory, all in a consistent format. This becomes critical as your apps grow in complexity or start to involve multiple agents or dynamic workflows. Learning MCP now will give you a future-proof foundation as more orchestration tools and providers adopt it. The next step is RAG, Retrieval Augmented Generation. You've probably heard that LLMs can't access real-time or private data. RAG addresses this by allowing you to connect your models to external data sources. Here's how it works. You split your documents into chunks, embed them into vectors, store them in a vector database like Chroma or VV8, then retrieve the most relevant chunks at query time. These are then fed back into the model as context. This pattern is central to modern AI products, whether it's AI search, support bots, or knowledge assistance. Start small at first. Connect a few markdown documents or PDF to a chatbot and see what you can create. Frameworks like Langchain or Llama Index help make this process even easier. All right, we are now at the more advanced stage of the roadmap. The next step is model tuning and customization because sometimes prompting and RAG aren't enough. You might want your model to adopt a specific tone, understand niche vocabulary, or behave consistently in edge cases. That's where fine tuning comes in. Fine-tuning lets you teach a model. Instead of training it from scratch, you can use parameter-efficient fine-tuning techniques like LoRa or QLoRa. These methods allow you to update only a small subset of the model, making it cheaper and faster. For hands-on experience, Hugging Face PEFT library or SFT trainer tutorials are good starting points. This is obviously an advanced step, but if any application requires custom model behaviors, this is the way to go. The eighth and final step in this roadmap is to integrate everything you know about AI models, APIs, and agents into a cohesive, scalable, and resilient architecture. This is where everything comes together. Modern AI applications aren't just about calling a model and returning a response. They're full-fledged distributed systems that combine traditional software engineering with the new paradigm of reasoning and generative intelligence. You're orchestrating data, pipelines, user images, input, memory stores, tool usage, model selection, fallback strategy, logging, monitoring, and so much more, all while leveraging AI systems for efficiency and effectiveness. 
You'll need to design for scale, handling thousands or even millions of requests per day. That means thinking deeply about asynchronous workflows, queues, retries, load balancing, and auto-scaling. It also means designing for resilience and availability. What if a vector database query times out? What does the failover and recovery story for a highly AI-centric system look like? You need to start thinking in terms of agentic architecture, systems where LLMs don't just respond to prompts, but actively plan, reason, and interact with external tools and data sources. These agents can perform multiple step tasks, hold memory, make decisions, and even coordinate with other agents. Frameworks like LangGraph, Autogen, and Crew AI are leading the way here. Just like how we evolved from monoliths to microservices in the 2000s, we are now entering a world where agentic systems become composable units in modern software design. The future of software engineering is AI native. The ability to create resilient, modular, and intelligent systems will shape the next generation of software engineers. This roadmap provides you with the head start you need to be part of that generation. Good luck and let me know in the comments below if you have any questions for me. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this video useful. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.